I got to fight as well. Military and law enforcement, it's often taught to shoot center mass. There's many vital organs in the upper torso of the human body. But for a zombie, it's going to take a headshot. We need to turn off the light switch. Zombies surround us in comic books, oh. on TV, in movies. <laughs> but what if they were really here? <laughs> kiki, Kiki. There are people who are actively considering just that scenario. Former Vice President Richard Cheney uh, talked about the 1% problem. If there was even a 1% chance that Al Qaeda launches a, a terrorist attack on the United States, the consequences would be so grave that it would be <laughs> worth <laughs> doing any kind of countermeasure possible. Bring Kiki over. Uh, now let's concede that oh, oh, oh. the likelihood of a zombie attack is much lower. <laughs> the consequences are so great that I think we have to engage in policy planning now rather than wait for the inevitable. Those preparing for a zombie apocalypse believe it's a good way to prepare for the worst, whether it's a zombie invasion or any catastrophic <laughs> event. I do have a zombie preparedness kit. It is called my earthquake kit. And there is nothing in that kit that I would not need in a zombie plague, uh, right down to the crowbar. There's nothing in your zombie pick it up, preparedness pick it up. kit you wouldn't have in a zombie preparedness kit. You have your home set up. You have a supply of food and water for at least three days. If your house or where you're living is unstable, you have a plan. Surviving a disaster <laughs> isn't what? just about stocking up. It's also about acquiring real <laughs> survival <laughs> skills. J.L. Bourne, a naval officer trained in survival and author of popular zombie novels, has applied his training to the possibility 